When I think of Huntington, West Virginia, certain names and places come to mind, like Marshall University, founded in 1838, our historic Keith Albee Theater, built in 1928, Jim Steak and Spaghetti House, founded in 1938, Camden Park, opened in 1903, and Hal Greer Boulevard, named after the NBA Hall of Famer and Huntington native. The list goes on and on of familiar names and places synonymous with our fine city, founded by Collis P. Huntington in 1870. We are Marshall. We are Huntington. Throughout the years, some things change, some things remain the same. My experiences in Huntington often remind me of something else we are. That is, if you share my heritage of being of African-American descent. In the eyes of many Huntingtonians, we are second-class citizens. We are a nuisance. We are trouble. We are not wanted here because we are colored. For the most part, I feel somewhat welcome in most establishments, although I still feel that a little extra attention is afforded me by managers, team members, and associates in any given retail environment. Ironically, the establishments where I feel the most unwelcomed are the places where I'd expect spirits to be most high, most fun-filled, most jovial. Nightclubs. 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 Huntington's Fourth Avenue boasts a plethora of bars and nightclubs to satisfy any taste. Unfortunately, dress codes in many of these establishments unfairly target African Americans and are more often enforced upon African Americans than others. I can read between the lines. Can you? They might as well just say no colored allowed. Dress codes are tailored to prevent entry to whomever the staff deems a problem, most often due to unfair, racially biased stereotypes. I've actually seen dress codes that went so far as to list brands of clothing, which if worn by patrons would prevent entry. Names like Sean John, FUBU, Fat Farm, Echo, Rockaware. Notice a trend? Popular brands of urban culture, which also happen to be owned by African Americans as well as other minorities. This is economic terrorism aiming to derail the success of minority-owned fashion companies by discouraging people from buying their brands. Have you experienced this bigoted behavior by nightclubs in Huntington? Many have. Unfortunately, other than venting to friends and family about these practices, no one takes a stand. For years, I didn't take a stand either, until now. My civil rights are being violated by nightclub owners here in Huntington, West Virginia. Recently, a good friend was in town, networking, taking meetings, discussing a mentoring program he co-founded for inner-city youth here in Huntington. After a six-hour commute, said meetings, and networking, he decided to have a drink with some friends at Davis's place on 8th Street and 8th Avenue. As he approached the threshold of entry, he was stopped by a staff member in a very confrontational manner and told to remove his ball cap. As if provoked, this staff member also informed my friend that he couldn't put the cap into his pocket, but that he had to take it to his vehicle, and that if he didn't like it, he could leave. Not to his surprise, my friend, an African American, observed Caucasian patrons inside, enjoying their night sporting ball caps. The next night, a group of friends, along with the same individual mentioned previously, decided to go socialize at Shoops on 4th Avenue. Two of my friends were sporting ball caps, and I warned them that they might not gain entry into the club. As we approached the entrance, I saw two Caucasian males entering Shoops, both sporting ball caps. I directed my friends to step away from the entrance to observe whether or not those two Caucasians would be granted entry which, of course, they were. Well, my friends weren't. My African-American friends. Honestly, I have scores of stories similar to these. Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you? 
Pastor Dante Jackson. You don't have to let stereotypes define you. I stand with Representative Bobby Bush of Illinois, who was quoted in the, in the Senate chamber as saying that just because you wear a hoodie, it doesn't make you a hoodlum. And maybe somebody here today is living under the guise of a stereotype. Maybe somebody from your neighborhood said that you would never make it. Maybe some of you are first generation college students. No matter who you are, no matter where you find yourself tonight, don't let stereotypes define you. If they expect for you to be a dope dealer, don't let that stereotype define you. If they expect for you to be a young black man who has a baby and doesn't take care of it, put a ring on it and don't let that stereotype define you. If they expect you to drop out of school and lose your financial aid after the second semester, don't let that stereotype define you. If they expect you to drop out of school and drop into the rap game, graduate and then do a mixtape and don't let that stereotype define you. Professor Philip Carter. Professor Carter, obviously you've mentored a lot of students from a lot of different states. Have any of your students ever complained to you about being stereotyped or, or any type of discrimination in, in Huntington, in the Huntington areas? Uh, uh, Mr. Crawford, what's so ironic? You bring that question up. Today at lunch, <laughs> today at lunch, all young people, these are all young people, we were sitting down talking, and they're all professional. Uh, they're all out of school, and that's all they talked about. They continue to be stereotyped, even though they have one, two, three different degrees. They are still stereotyped. They talked about the clubs. They, they talked about uh, being on the job, uh, talked about uh, size and color of skin. Now, if that doesn't sound like a throwback right. <laughs> to the days of, 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 of old, and yet here are our young professionals, only out of school a couple of years, experiencing the same thing and feelings of discomfort and feelings of a hostile environment while trying to find entertainment and or trying to do their job at their work site. So that issue of stereotypes brought up, I, I simply sit there and listen absolutely absolutely amazing that that type of discussion and every one of them had experienced something recently right and i you know i'm one who uh, witnessed some of these um, blatant forms of intimidation around the issue of the the nightclubs and then i <clears throat> i remember one day i was passing by. It was probably uh, between 12 and 1 o'clock at, at night. Uh, I guess I shouldn't have been on the street. Oh. <laughs> on my, I put my, clean it up on my way home. Uh, <laughs> and there, on, there was a line, a line of black guys, a line of white guys, and there was a line of women. Now the women line was integrated. There was a group of black guys standing there. I knew some of the guys and I said, what are you guys doing? That they won't let us in the club. I said, what do you mean they won't let you in the club? They were letting the white guys in the club. And so if you had a, a black woman with you, they moved on over to the other line. That line all went into the club. All the women could get in the club. The black guys couldn't. And I'll I'll never forget it. I I really became angry. I you know I had to make a decision. Uh, you know, it's between 12 and 1 o'clock at night. I don't have anybody else with me. I've got to figure out how I'm going to negotiate this battle. 
So I decided to tell the white guys, come up, I mean the black guys, you know, I'm going to tell them that you're going to be back here at 12 o'clock next Saturday. And you're going to organize every black guy that's here and every black guy is going to bring three or four with him. We're going to meet at 12 o'clock and we're going to go in that club. Miraculously, the next day, all the signs were down about what to wear in the club. Because I took a, I took a newspaper person with me. I, I went down to the newspaper and I took this newspaper person with, to show him the signs were all gone. And something has to be done about that, and I think that's one way to do it. And simply make it make it public. Gonna have 200 black guys. Any white guys who want to join us, fine. But they're, they're not going in the club. We're gonna boycott your clubs. It's not a matter of not want. Uh, well, if they don't want you, you shouldn't go there. Well, yes, we do have a couple of African-American clubs. But I thought, I fought that battle. <laughs> yeah, we be right, right, 50 some years ago, I fought that battle. Yeah, we're fighting the battle. Right, that, that, that battle should already be won. Folks must be punished if they're doing something inconsistent and illegal and immoral. They, they must be, and we have to find creative ways. And I know that all of the young people, you, you have some of the most creative ways in the world to deal with issues. It's just a matter of sitting down and saying, here is a way to deal with this. But it must hit people in their economic pocketbook. Pastor Samuel Moore. What advice can you offer our youth to overcome color barriers and social injustice? I think, um, and, and I hope that I'm wrong, but I think we will never get to a point to where we'll be able to overcome the social injustices and racial barriers um, that exist in the United States. I am pleased as I can be that we have a, an African-American president in the White House, but I never thought I would see that. I always thought that there would be a, a white woman who would serve as president before there would be a black man. And I'm glad we've come, we made a lot of progress. However, there's a lot of, of uh, room for growth. Specifically to our black youth, I think the thing is that we have to be confident in ourselves. Parents have to teach their children to be confident in themselves and, and to rest in who they are. And not to be so swayed by what we see in other people. We, we see a lot of things that have um, been modeled before us by other African Americans that we consider, we'll take that to be a culture. And that may not be our, well, it may be our culture, but it's not blackness. And so I think that people ought to be comfortable in themselves. I think that our young people ought to know that there is a, a transition that we make, that uh, there are times when I can wear certain clothes and if I want to move into another level of acceptance, I have to make adjustments, unfortunately, we're going to have to make adjustments rather than society, depending on society, make adjustments. We can either try to fit a, a, a round peg into a square hole, or we can try to get, you know, some, some uh, sort of um, uh, cooperative uh, relationship between us and society. I do not believe, however, that society should expect black people not to be black. I think we must hold on to our culture, we must hold on to our faith, we must hold on to our belief in who we are. And so racial profiling is wrong, whether it's against African-Americans, against Asians, whether it's against homosexuals, uh, as far as an ethnic group is concerned or a cultural group is concerned, uh, the racial issue, racial profiling is wrong. We will have to make adjustments just as we have all along in life. And we will make those adjustments because we're a strong people. Have your civil rights been violated here in Huntington? Have you been made to feel unwelcome in nightclubs, restaurants, or any other places of business here? How many times have you or someone you know complained about being denied entry to a nightclub for not adhering to a particular dress code, but at the same time witnessing Caucasians being granted entry 
wearing exactly what you were wearing. It appears that the real dress code infraction isn't your apparel, it's your black skin. Maybe you should change your style of dress. Maybe you just shouldn't go to places where you feel unwelcome. Maybe, just maybe you should maybe stand you up, should stand up, speak out, speak out, create some dialogue, create some dialogue about the blatant racism that exists here in Huntington, West Virginia. Or maybe you should just go back to Africa.